Hey guys. We're back! Yep. <laughs> we and, say that every time, because there's always like a long gap in between videos. We haven't done one in a while. And we were going to do top ten comic book women that are the sexiest. Then we realized, talking about women that we want to railroad is kind of a bad idea with today's butt hurts. Yeah, especially so when they're fictional else. characters, too. <laughs> um, so we're um, doing Fear Street. Maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Fear Street. <laughs> it's way better than Goosebumps. Yeah. Um... Well, uh, last time we talked about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, uh, last video, that was something that was, you know, really important to us growing up, something that was all the rage in the 90s, and yeah, today, as you had you guys, we're covering Goosebumps, um, which was another thing that was, uh, you know, uh, Goosebumps and Animorphs uh, were like two book series in the 90s that were the freaking tits when we were growing up. They actually made kids want to read. This was before Harry Potter. Slightly. Yeah. Um, I mean, this yeah, this is before like Harry Potter and like all the other stuff. Like Goosebumps and Animorphs were just like everywhere. And like, I remember getting so excited going to the library and like seeing like the back section, like you know, the, all the Goosebumps books. I was like, wow, I'd see the covers. Like even before I could read, I think maybe, or no, no, I can, no, never mind. I'll take that back. I, I could read by this point. But um, God, I grew, I read them all the time. I was constantly reading a Goosebumps book growing up. Um, I've, I've read just about all of them. Um, you know, and I, being a huge horror fan, obviously, you know, something. You know, as a kid, like, something that was, like, horror, but, like, for kids. Um, basically, it was, like, Tales from the Crypt, uh, but, like, in book form and for, like, a slightly younger audience. Um, you know, that was just right up my alley. So, you know, the Goosebumps are a huge part of my childhood. You know, something that was really important to me growing up. I noticed that the library never had all of them. They have some yeah. of them, or they had, like, several copies of the same one, but never, like, all of them all together. The most that I ever saw was, like, they'd have, like, maybe four stories, like, two of the Two Your Own Adventure books. Which were actually really good. Yeah, like, you know, some, uh, some, yeah, I love those. Like, give yourselves goosebumps, um, or, you know, you'd like to say, turn to page 101 to follow the ghost up the stairs, or oh, turn you to died. page 62. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, you tripped and fell and hit your head. The end, you know. You're trapped page... in a coffin for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Try not to breathe too much. Turn to page 62 if you want to ignore the monster hunter asking you for some money or whatever. Um. That was actually in one of the books. That's not a joke. Turn to page 35 to go uh, get in the, uh, the guy with the mustache in his white windowless van. <laughs> and he'll give you some candy. Uh, no, but, uh, Nobody ever saw you again. Yeah, exactly. The upside is, you're pretty famous in the milk business. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the original Goosebumps series, which started, I think, like, 91 or 92, there were 62 original books. And then they had the Tales from the Goosebumps. I said it was just an interactive one where you chose your own adventure. I think there was about 50 of those. Then there was 25 in the Goosebumps series 2000, which were for slightly older kids. Those were a little scarier, like a little more uh, intense, and uh, as I said, for like a, kind of an older readers. And then like, R.L. Stein... One of those was pretty much Pet Cemetery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, R.L. Stein uh, didn't work on Goosebumps for a long time after that. Um, but then he finally returned with a new series called Goosebumps Horror Land. Um, and then, then there was, like, Hall of Horrors and Goosebumps Most Wanted. Now the newest one's, like, Slappy World. I don't even know. It's hard to keep Slappy up with. World. Yeah, it's, it's getting kind of ridiculous, actually. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, like, it's getting it's getting right. a little much. But um, I, yeah. I actually checked out a few of the Horrorland books. They're, st they're still pretty good. R.L. Stein, the author of Goosebumps, he's still got it. Um, and, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, he also did the popular Fear Street uh, series, which was slightly more um, adult oriented well maybe not even adult but like more like for like older teenagers as opposed to like middle school age which was probably the target audience of the goosebumps looks fear street was like a little older more sophisticated a little more mature um then they did more ghosts murder. of fear street yeah people actually died in the fear street books um and ghosts of fear street was a little more like goosebumps it was a little more for younger audiences it was a little more fantasy oriented you know, they had like the babysitter and silent night and halloween party and the first what i noticed about world. um fear street it had more like um overarching stories in some of the books yeah, compared yeah, to Goosebumps. Yeah. Goosebumps only had like Monster Blood and, uh, and... A lot of it was like serial killers. And, the uh, Dummies and... And Fear Street. Yeah, Goosebumps is so a so little more... Yeah. I can't remember all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's been 20 years. Well, uh, the first Goosebumps book was... Uh, the first Goosebumps book was Welcome to Dead House. Um, that was a good episode of the show. Yes, it was. Yeah, we'll get to the TV show in a minute, but... um. My favorites were always The Night of the Living Dummy, you know, Night of the Living Dummy 1, 2, and 3, then Bride of the Living Dummy with Goosebumps 2000, uh, Slappy's Nightmare, and now they have like Revenge of the Living Dummy, Dummy, S Son of Slappy, The Affairs of Slappy, you know, whatever. Um, but, the name uh, Slappy was a bad idea for these titles, because <laughs> all these sound wrong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But the thing is, like, the thing about a living dummy is, like, that's a pretty scary image. Like, it's a lot scarier than a living dog, because, say, picture a dummy walking. It would be, like, it, it would look really, really creepy. Like, it would be kind of an accordion effect. And I remember in Night of the Living Dummy 2, the main character, Amy, is seeing Slappy as she, he's walking across the room. She's, she, the description just gave me chills. It was like, he walked like a scarecrow, because he had no bones, no bones at all. And, like, just imagine you're laying in bed, and you look up, and you see a dummy walking towards your bed. I mean, it, there's almost nothing more terrifying than that. And that's one complaint I have with the show, is they didn't ever have an image like that, and especially the movie, the recent movie with Jack Black. It, it totally missed the point of the Goosebumps books. Like, it felt like they just got a bunch of Goosebumps books, looked at the covers, said, oh yeah, let's just have all these monsters on the covers. You have the werewolf, okay, the dummy, the monster blood. Oh, no, no, actually, no, let's make it a pink and call it the blob that ain't everyone, even though it's basically monster blood, but a different color. Yeah, as you can tell, I wasn't a huge fan of that movie. It didn't feel like the Goosebumps books. It didn't have the 90s feel that made Goosebumps so great. It was just... I don't know, it was just made for money, and, like, I get to see that. It was enjoyable, but not as, like, not on the same level as the books were. It, it didn't feel like a nostalgic blast from the past at all. But we'll, we'll talk about the movie later. We're talking about the books now. I remember the first one I ever read was Werewolf of Fever Swamp. That was a really good one. That the, one was actually really creepy. The identity of the werewolf was pretty obvious, like, early on. I, I knew who the werewolf was going to be, but he actually, actually talked about, like, animals, like, getting mauled. Like they found dead animals a lot. And I think they had, like, what, deer in their backyard? Yeah. And one of them got, like, eaten up. Uh, the dog's barking. Was a werewolf. Yes. Shut up! <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I don't really talk to my dog that way. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, I think the first one I ever read was probably either Monster Blood, which was the third book, or maybe, um, or maybe even the first Night of the Living Dummy. I don't remember. But, yeah, the Monster Blood, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 were really good. Uh, actually, three and four weren't all that good. They introduced his annoying cousin Kermit, and then the bully character Conan. Like, uh, oh god, he just really got on my nerves. Like, he was such an asshole. And then the main character Evan Ross was cool in the first two books, but then by book three he became kind of insufferable and annoying, much like the protagonist in Curse of Camp Cold Lake, which I have to say, despite the awesome okay, so artwork, is probably was, my least favorite. Okay, so that was a camp on another planet. No, or that, on was, the moon. Uh, that was Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Wait. Or turn out as another planet, and then they're going to Earth at the end. Okay. Yeah, those Wait, so what, was you, what were you talking about? Cruise of Camp Cold Lake with a really annoying uh, protagonist, Sarah, I guess. Uh, there's a really awesome Does part that in the dead middle. dead people in the lake? Sort of. Okay. She, she goes into the lake, she almost drowns, and she comes back up, and she notices the camp is, like, deserted. And let's say it's like a ghost camp. It's like a, it's like a nether world, and, like, there's a ghost girl there. And the twist makes no sense. I won't spoil it, but it's just, it's one of the stupidest twists ever. Like, it just, it's totally implausible. Uh, but other than that, other than the awesome artwork and that part where she's in Ghost World, the whole book is just a train wreck. It's one of my least favorites, along with How to Kill a Monster, which also wasn't very good. And um, You want to know one that's really weird? Shocker and Shock Street. That had a stupid ending. Yes, the kids were robots the whole time. What was that? Okay, yeah, Sorry, good. One of the weirdest ones, because the message is kind of, what the fuck, is Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Where like he yeah. accidentally erased his sister, but everything is better. No one cares. Like, What? Yeah, yeah, that was similar to that one where, like, the kid had their a remote click, I think. I think that was in one of the, uh, the Tales to Give You Goosebumps, where, like, which are anthology stories, which, like, there's, like, six of them. Uh, tales to Give You says more tales, even more tales. Like, they had, like, like four or five stories, like, it was, like, short stories. Yeah, there's one click where he had a remote, and, like, he made his sister disappear or something. That was really similar. Someone I remember from those books is, like... Those kids, like, that one girl's a vampire, that turns out they're vampires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, yeah. a vampire. Yeah, that goth... Oh, wait, no, that was... Never mind, that was our, Are You Afraid of the Dark. Are You Afraid of the Dark, by the way, was a much better show than, than the Goosebumps TV show. I like the Goosebumps books, but the TV show... Uh, are You Afraid of the Dark is much scarier. <laughs> like, wow, that was a creepy show. Um, the Goosebumps show was good, too, but, like, some of the... Some of the some of the books didn't adapt well. Like, One Day at Horrorland. Like, that episode is more silly than scary. It was just goofy, like, really childish. And the book was actually kind of scary in certain parts. Um, but yeah, other other episodes didn't translate well. Like calling all creeps, like when the when they turned into the lizard monsters, they just looked ridiculous. They didn't look as cool as they were described in the book. Um, so yeah, some of them weren't adapted very well. I think the Haunted Mask, the first one, was probably the closest, most faithful adaptation of the source material. Haunted Mask Two took a totally different direction, did totally different things. But yeah, Carly Beth and the Haunted Mask. It's one of my favorite books, and the Haunted Mask Two was good too. One of the interesting things is the only book series that actually go back to the same place over and over is just the Horrorland books. Yeah. Pretty much. I was wondering how they keep going back to the same place. Like, it's almost different every time. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, why do they keep going back? Like, I know they got, you know, they, they found that 
uh, what was it called, the Strange Files or whatever. It's like an X Files. It was, like, it was like Agent Mulder and Agent Scully from the X Files. It was like a knockoff of them. Like they took them, the kids back to the park to prove that it was dangerous. And like, <laughs> I can't believe they agreed to that. But yeah, like a lot of the books where there's like sequel, there's series like the Monster Blood, Night of the Living Dummy, Haunted Mask. Uh, you know, it's like a series. It's like you know, there's sequels. Uh, most of them have the same uh, characters, like you know, Carly Beth in the Haunted Mask and Evan Ross in the Monster Blood. Although he wasn't in the recent one, Monster Blood for Breakfast, which was one of the horror, like, one of the newer ones. Doesn't sound very good at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but the Night of the Living Dummy books always have different protagonists. Like, Slappy's the only recurring character. Because, you know, I had Lindy and Chris, the twins in the first one, then Amy in the second one, then what's-her-name hey, and her brother in the third have one. Have they ever explained, like, how he comes alive? Is he, like, possessed? Well, there's, like, or... a spell. Well, it's turned out he was, like, a sorcerer. Like, either he was the sorcerer and transferred his soul into the body, kind of like Chucky, or um, it was carved from the coffin that a sorcerer was buried in, like, the sorcerer brought him to life. And then, like, you know, his... Mr. Wood, who was the villain in the first uh, Night of the Living Dummy, Slappy actually didn't become alive till the very end. Like, he was carved from the same wood to, like, brothers. And there's other dummies throughout the series, like Dennis and you Part 2. You know what would have been cooler? Or there's him, other like, dummies in Part 3. If he was carved from the tree that they hung the sorcerer from. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, but no. Well, it was carved from the coffin. It's kind of similar. And then, eh. then of course, the doll, uh, Mary Ellen, how do you make a, Bride of the Living How do you dummy. actually make a ventriloquist dummy out of... A coffin. Oh, knows. Not that much to work with. Yeah, there. you're right. <laughs> they probably have to use the entire coffin just about. Yeah, right. yeah, dummies are creepy as hell. And like, like I think the books really captured that well. The books weren't all that scary. None of them really, uh, you know, scared me. A few kind of like, you know, there's some suspenseful cheese kind of gave me chills. It kind of freaked me out a little bit when I was a kid, but not too much. When I read them now, you know, they, you know, they, pff, God's like, I'm so desensitized. I could watch. You know, no horror movie is going to scare me, so certainly not going to be scared by a Goosebumps book. Some of them didn't really make sense. A lot of them did. A lot of the twists were implausible. No, no, I mean, like, and The Abominable Snowman from Pasadena. The Legend of the Lost. Legend of the Lost Legend? Yeah. yeah that was one of my least That was hard to remember. That one didn't really, it wasn't horrific enough. It wasn't, like, scary. There was dwarves. Like, like, what the fuck? Well, and then there were Digital the Lost Gnomes. <laughs> Yeah, that too. Well, the I'm plot that ate everyone. Um, that was a good prize. How did he not get sued for that one? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he was inspired. R.L. Stein was mostly inspired by, like, the Twilight Zone and the Night Gallery. Like, there was, um, I think there was a Twilight Zone episode that was very similar to the premise of Say Cheese and Die with the evil camera that um, Greg and his friends find an evil camera. And every picture they take, it either shows the future or something bad is going to happen or it actually causes something bad to happen. Like in the second book, he gets really, really fat and starts gaining weight and his friend, uh, Sherry, she starts getting really skinny. And uh, the, the the episode actually made it kind of creepy because you saw Sherry's hand and like it got all bony and skeletal. It didn't show her face, but like, you know, I was hoping that she would start to look like, you know, really, really thin, like the movie Thinner. <laughs> That's basically what it was. Um, okay, okay. So another one I was wondering about. You've read them all, right? Pretty much. Okay, pretty much. so... Um, these two kids go to stay with their grandparents near this lighthouse, and there's this ghost going around. So ghost like, Beach. Yeah. So, okay, were they Eating go dogs? The ghost is eating dogs? That was a weird one. No. Like, no, 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 no. There's this dog, and, like, at the end they mentioned, oh, that dog gave us away. We were, like, they were ghosts yeah, that's or, or something. That's I, it, Ghost Beach. Yeah, the grandparents turned out to be ghosts, yeah. Yeah, I don't get that. They're like, mmm, so, dog Who are they following around the beach? Them or something else? Well, there's these other two kids, and, like, it turned out, they, they kept ping-ponging back and forth. He thought that the kids were ghosts, and he thought the main kids were ghosts. There was a creepy old guy who lived in the cave. He thought he was a ghost. And Seriously? Seriously? That, ghost hunter. That there's so many s- twists. It doesn't <laughs> make sense. And the grandparents were ghosts, and somehow, and for some reason, ghosts eat dogs now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know Speaking what Speaking of ghost dogs. The barking ghost. That, that was a good one. Where, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. That that one... Look, so they're chipmunks now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Okay. How I Got My Shrunken Head. That was a good one. That was more of an adventure than a scary one. Like, you know, the bad guys that shrunk at the very end. The TV episode actually did that one justice. I thought that the adapted for television was pretty good on that one. Werewolf Skin was really good. Yes. Yeah, not as good as Werewolf Fever Swamp, but it was pretty good. Better the than the TV episode breath. was really kind of creepy at the end. Yeah, Vampire Breath was weird. Like, the potion, the bottle made them travel time and stuff. Wait, why did it do that? I don't know. I thought it, it turned sense. them into vampires. Well, it turns out at the end they, they were vampires. Well, in the, in the TV episode, the two kids were actually twins. They were siblings. But in the, movie, in the book, they were just friends. And the girl became a werewolf at the end. But, um, yeah, it took, took them back in town to the guy, Count Nightwing, his castle. And, like, I don't know, it just got really weird. There's a bunch of vampires over He couldn't find his teeth, so he couldn't bite them. And, I don't know, it just... It just... That one could have been Okay, better. so... 
which was the one where at the end it turned out that the girl that he's friends with turned out to be a werewolf or something. Vampire bread. Really? Yeah, well, she turned into a werewolf. Well, there's probably, well, there probably another one. There's probably... Hell, didn't uh, Werewolf Fever Swamp end with the main character turned into a werewolf and then he and his dog ran out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, we have piano lessons, could be murder, Phantom of the Auditorium, Bad Hair Day. Some of them were kind of First forgettable. First of the Mass Mutant. Yeah, or, or uh, Attack of the Mutant. Attack of the Mutant. Oh. Um, and then the Goosebumps 2000 series, it started with, like, Cry of the Cat, and then, uh... <clears throat> that one was crazy. And Bride of a Dummy, a Creature Teacher, then Invasion of the Body Squeezers, part one and two, which, honestly... I love those. I like them, but, like, just start with part two, because part one has all this unnecessary filler, just nothing but padding, like, it's a bunch of weird things. He's got this remote control in his room, and makes him do weird stuff. You don't see an actual body snatch, uh, squeezer, sorry, body squeezer, <laughs> till the very end. Then we had Revenge of the Body Squeezers, which was, like, the sixth, um book in the special edition Give Yourself Goosebumps series and like they were like blue aliens they actually talked a, and they were intelligent bunch, and had weapons I had a bunch of those those Me two too. I had I liked, I liked both of those Escape from the Carnival of Horrors Curse of the Cave Beast was my the first one I ever yeah. had um, Curse of the Creeping Coffin Night and Werewolf that one too Woods. I love those they're so fun Dude, that like, was hard because like you had to yeah. actually <laughs> Look through it to remember numbers, so you pick the right yeah. grave. And sometimes you have to add numbers together. Sometimes you even have like a map that you have to memorize. They have like they they, they have like parts where like if you read the book Nightmare uh, Night of Fear, uh, Werewolf Fever Swamp, uh, what was the dead animal that they found in the woods? If it was this, turn to page one hundred one. If it was this, turn to page twenty. You know, <laughs> I, th I thought that was kind of cool. Egg monsters from Mars. I think that oh, was one of the God. first ones I read. I remember I had the toy, like the egg, and you opened it up. It was the goo inside. <laughs> That had a weird ending, because it was like, like he, he showed him to like the scientist, and the scientist captured him and like locked him in a room, but then the egg monsters like all formed together and saved him. They formed a blanket so it wouldn't get cold, like that was just weird. So were they evil or good? They were good, I guess. And like, and then, um, Stay well, Out of the Basement, which is the second book, and like had the dad turning into a plant, but then he wasn't their real dad, and in the end, like the flower, what so was, not be real um, father. What was the one where like, they had those 3D images where like... If you look at them, they come to life, and they only went back when he put his glasses oh, on. Oh, yeah, he had, like, a poster that was 3D. Um, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he couldn't see it whenever saying, like... Wasn't that a Fear Street book? No. Um, no, I don't think Nightmare so. in 3D or something? Yes. Yeah, I think that was a That's Fear a Street book. I don't think it was Fear Street, though, because nobody died. Oh, I don't know. The next one was, like, but it goes something about a treehouse... Yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that was Fear Street. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. know. It's, it's been a while since I read It's been a long these. time. Yeah, man. It's, these are, they, <laughs> we don't remember all this these stuff. These were awesome in the 90s, but, you know, it's been so long. Um, yeah, the, yeah, a lot of them were hit or miss. Like, a lot of them were, you know, weren't all that good, but, um, I the mean, adult, a lot of them were great. The adults awesome. in these books are kind of stupid. Yeah, a lot of them are. And, like, R.L. Stein's kind of like the kid's version of Stephen King. I think a lot of people make that comparison. He's so actually he's the most Bruce successful author. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, Bruce Cobo was more like sci-fi, like aliens and robots and stuff. He had some like horror. Let's see, let's see. Is there any that we're uh, forgetting? Any main? I can't think of any essential, thing. definitive Goosebumps books we're leaving out. At the end of the video, I'll go show you my Goosebumps collection. Hey, what was that one where those really two freaking dark creepy twins? But then it turns out that their mom's keeping them young. But at the end, they're old and she's older. It's I didn't make this up. Okay, I remember it. It was, oh, yeah. it was episode of the TV I you're show. talking about. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, there's a few episodes of the TV show, like like tr trilogy. There's like three of those that are actually original stories. They weren't based on a book. Well, and some of them were based on the tales to give you boost, goosebumps uh, anthology stories. I think there was like there were 74 episodes of the show, and like only two of them adapted the Goosebumps 2000, which is Bride Living Dummy, Dummy and Cry the Cat, which was the first uh, Goosebumps 2000. But they didn't adapt all the books. Uh, Beware the Snowman um, wasn't adapted. Um, Deep Trouble 1 wasn't adapted. But Deep Trouble 2 was. Same with Night of the Living Dummy. The first Night of the Living Dummy wasn't adapted for the TV. Um, and then Return of the Mummy was adapted, but Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, which is the fifth book, wasn't adapted. That was the book that came before. So, yeah, some of them, like, I don't know, some of them, the sequels are adapted, but the first one wasn't. Uh, Curse of the um, Cat Cold Lake, that's another one that wasn't. What was it? What's that one with the, the mud TV monsters? Show. What's it? Uh, you Dragons? can't scare me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the mud yeah. monster. Yeah. Did, you can't scare me. Were there actually monsters in that book? Or was. Well, it didn't turn out like it was like somebody in a costume, but then it turned out it really were mud monsters or something. Yeah, I never finished it. Yeah, I don't think I did either, now that I think about it. Because some um, of the, let's be honest, some of the books are really boring. Uh, yeah. 
Well, I feel like, like, yeah, like, um, Let's Get Invisible, which is what, like, the sixth book in the series? All they did was stand in the room, up in the attic, and the secret room is make themselves invisible in front of the mirror. They, the, the extent of it was, like, one of them went in the neighbor's backyard and juggled tomatoes. They didn't do anything, they didn't play pranks on anybody, they didn't spy on girls in the locker room. I don't know, right? They didn't do, <laughs> they didn't do anything that an actual invisible person would do. They just stood in front of the mirror and said, I'll stay invisible longer than you. Okay, five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna stay invisible for six minutes. That's, like, all they did. And the reflections start taking over, and the, the twist ending was so obvious. What's the twist ending? His brother was left-handed the whole time. Then at the end, he threw with his right hand. The guy was like, "Oh my God, it's his reflection!" Even though we broke the mirror and smashed it, and all the reflections should return. But uh, whatever, another plausible so does, twist ending. Is that really a big deal in the end of it? Just his, it's a, a reflection is alive. That's it. Well, his brother was annoying, and he was an insufferable little prick, and I couldn't stand stand him. So I'm kind of glad that he got sucked into the mirror. The there was world. another. There was another one. What was it? My best um, friend is invisible. Where it turned out they were how all I aliens. Learned to fly. That was yeah, like, I remember that. Yeah, the cover always it. stood out to me. A lot of the covers stood out to me. Like some of the covers were even better than the books themselves. Like <laughs> Curse of Camp Cold Lake. But my best friend is invisible. Like it turned out they were all aliens, and like they all took over the planet. And the invisible friend was actually the only human left. Really? The yeah. Remember the in the TV you know, so they turned around. They had eyes and mouths like in the back of their heads and their hair. Was it was such a shitty looking special effect, but. It was so awesome when I was a kid. What was that one? Um, was it Night in Terror Tower? Where that ghost, yeah. Headless Ghost, that they get trapped in? Oh, I love the Headless Ghost. That was one of the best books. I can't remember that the name awesome. of that. It turned out the whole, the whole, it was like a tour through like a, uh, it was like a ghost tour. And like, it turned out all the tour guides were dead. They were all ghosts and like the buildings were actually all boarded up and stuff. That was awesome. That was one of my favorite books. How did that one I, again? I don't ghosts. remember. Did they get killed? The tour guides were all ghosts. And, like, it turned out the building that they were touring the whole time was actually abandoned and deserted. Like, a cop told him, he was like, get away from there. What are you kids doing mess around in there? Like, yeah. we're still on the ghost tour. Like, that shut down years ago or whatever. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, some of these books don't even really make sense. Was it Why I'm Afraid of Bees or something? Where the kid turns into a bee? I was probably inspired by the fly. Uh, the kid turns, yeah. he's, like a, he's like a kid's head on a bee. Here's another cover that stood out to me. Um, Why would he have his, wait... The, if that was like that, they would just switch heads. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember if they switched bodies. Like it was like a bee head on a kid's if body. If they did that, then it would be like a, a. It'd be a giant bee body. It's stupid. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know. That's that never made sense to the fly either. Like, why does he have a giant fly head? And like, why is the fly? I mean, no. wait. Why? Why is the fly? Why does the fly have a, gi- a tiny human head? Was like, his head on the? Was yes. it him on the fly body, yeah. or was yeah. it? I don't know. In the original, the 1950s version, not the 80s remake. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Calling All Creeps had an awesome ending. That was where the villains actually won. Like, the guy was picked on. He was a nerd, and, like, everybody made fun of him. And at the end, he was trying to save the school from being turned into creeps. But then at the end, he was like, you know, fuck it. Let them all turn into creeps. I'll be their leader, you know. They get revenge. I kind of like that. I was and like, then they eat him. Yeah, ball. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> you don't so unha- see what happened after Okay, that. so, wait, wait, so... Were they, they getting replaced by too. lizard monsters, or were they getting turned into lizard monsters? Well, they put monsters? stuff, they put weird uh, seeds, um, I can't remember what they called them, imitation seeds or something, in, in the in like the food and the bake sale, like they all ate the cookies and they started turning into creeps, and like they thought he was his command, their commander, because like he put an ad in the school paper to get revenge on this bitch named Tasha, but like that turned out. Yeah, they weren't at all, because he never even proved to them that he could turn into one of those creatures, but whatever. I bet they found out when they were all creeps, and he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. Beware the Snowman was good. That had a cool ending. All the snowmen coming to life. and It was one of the funny endings. Like, the snowmen were surrounding. They're like, oh, no, the snowmen are like, can we go back down the mountain? It's cold up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them had, like, funny endings. But, uh, yeah, Goosebumps Series 2000, like, you know, the haunted car, I think it was. And some of those are actually pretty creepy. He, I did, he definitely uh, geared those toward older kids. Because the thing is, the kids who grew up reading Ghost, Goosebumps books, the originals, were older by then when the 2000 series came out. I think they started in, like, 98 or 99. Um, yeah, I haven't read many of the newer ones, so I'm not really on board with that. I don't know what Star Stein's really doing now. As I said, I checked out a few of the Horrorland uh, ones. Only the continuations, like Screaming the Haunted Mask, Revenge of the Living Dummy, you know Say Cheese and Die Screaming. What? When they made the movie, they should have R.L. Stein be himself. Yeah, well, he was. At the, it was funny because he was at the end, and, like, Jack Black walked by. He was like, hello, Mr. Black, and it was R.L. Stein. And, like, R.L. Stein was playing Jack Black, well, I mean, because, like, yeah. Jack Black hammed it up way too much, ruined the whole guy. Yeah, he kind of just played himself. He's like, my name's R.L. Stein, you know, like, he's playing Stein. Jack Black. Yeah, you know. Between Stein? Always, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't think it was so bad. I mean, uh, 
Okay, so... I thought it's hilarious okay, when he was okay. talking about Stephen King in the okay, car. Okay, let's, let's think about this for a second. Okay, so... He wrote the stories to keep the monsters in the books. And then they came real, and they never explained Okay, 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 so... So, let's say, before he started writing the books, there was monsters everywhere, right? Yeah. And he decided, hey, I'm just going to stop all the writing. It doesn't make any goddamn fucking sense! Yeah, it is, it, and, like, his daughter was one of his uh, creations that he wrote about the whole time. It was cool as it was seeing all these monsters, like, in live action on the big screen, like... Um, you know, CGI monsters, like, from the books. Like, I would have much rather an anthology. Like, like take, like, five of the best books and, like, adapt them really well with a big budget. Like, better than the TV show. And, like, you know, G Night Living Dummy, like, The Haunted Mask, like, uh, Blob that ate everyone. Um, stuff like did, that. If they did that with Deep the, Trouble. If they did Night Living Dummy, they should have, like, Chucky in, like, the background somewhere. It'd be funny, <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Wood, uh, the, the villain in Night Living Dummy, he had, like, red hair and, like, I think, like, a baseball cap, like... Red shoes. He wasn't dressed in a tuxedo, all sophisticated, like slappy. But uh, he was actually more brutal. I think Mr. Wood was like a little more vicious, a little more violent. He talked about torturing them, making them his slaves. I know Slappy did some mean things too, like in Slappy's Nightmare, where he threatened to kill the girl's sister. He's like, I just gotta kill her. It was like kind of told from his point of view too, which was interesting. But um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ghost I, Camp was uh... a cool one. Ghost Camp, and then Return to Ghost Camp, which is part of the series 2000. Both of them had stupid twists at the end, but like up to that point, they were all pretty good. You know, campers going to the camp and then finding out that they're the only. You know what's a really there. short list? What? Goosebumps books that don't have stupid twists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of the twists were done well. Some of them I actually didn't see coming, uh, like Monster like, Blood, the first one, which didn't make sense in the sequels. Welcome but... to Dead House. Their dog was a zombie at the end. And yeah, like, yeah. They don't crash the car. Yeah, it's it was, like, what that was weird. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and the TV show really changed a lot of the twi- a lot of the endings too. Like in uh, Shock Road, Shock Street. Yeah, the kids were robots again, but this time they got their revenge. I, I always hated that. About okay, the so the kids were robots. Okay, so, like, so they were robots, right? Yeah, just to so test like, out the theme like, park. Um, is it amusement park? Yeah. Okay. Like the robot kids were testing it out. And the clue was that the dad, at the beginning, like, one of the kids said, is mom going with us, too? And the dad was like, well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Because they didn't have a mother, because they're robots. And so I was like, you know, that was just weird. Um, but it had some cool scenes in the book up until the end. It kind of ruined it for me. Um, yeah, any other key Goosebumps books that we should mention? We might have to make a part two of this video someday. Uh, I can't really think of any more. Let me just go show my collection. I, I barely remembered any of these. Around yeah. Here. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Excuse us for the... Lack of uh, memory. Yeah, I'm finished. All right, yeah, I think we said all we need to say. There's a lot of books we didn't mention, but let's go ahead and show my collection. We did mention they're not very good. Yeah, that's likely the case. Okay, it's really dark, so you're not going to be able to see them very well with the damn shadow. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's way too freaking dark. I tried to put as much light in here as I could. Kind of pull some out. Goosebumps. These are all all the original first editions too. Yeah, here's the 2000 series over here. Like, uh, yeah, there's Invasion of Vice. Or no, that's uh, Return to Horrorland. Uh, there's a few of the Horrorland ones. Yeah, here's Give Yourself Goosebumps. Those are always fun. Curse of the Creeping Coffin. Scarecrow Walks at Wind Night. That's one we forgot to mention. That was a good one. Oh, yeah, Chris Lemps was in that. Yeah, yeah, he was. Be careful what you wish for. And of course the haunted mask. And of course Night Living Dummy. And like, yeah, the dummy thing is really creepy. I remember like when I was a kid, I would sit under my bed and read these. And like I'd be set up like under my headboard. I could be setting up. Um, I always loved this cover. It always stood out. Um, and like I put the book like on top of the headboard. And all I saw was like Slappy's really glowing green eyes. I thought that was really creepy. But then it changed his eyes to brown in the movie. And you never saw him walking. So like that wasn't scary at all. You never saw him walking. That creepy dummy walk. A oh, Beast from the East. That that was a weird one. That was a really weird Did one. Did that have a twist ending? Yes, I, I believe so. I don't really remember what it was. Toss here. I'll look. Watch your stuff on Fox Kids TV. <laughs> yeah. This is a reprint. I did. did. This come out while the show was on TV. This was out. These are the... Um, yeah, the reprints are... Um, have these really crappy covers that are like ugly as hell. But they have special they have hey. special editions. Hey. Like they have info about the characters at the end and stuff. Do you have to wear the purple peanut butter? Yes, I do. Seriously, this is stupid. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, 
here it is. Okay, where are the purple peanut butter? That's what they give yourself, three. Goosebumps ones. Ghost Camp. Yeah, a lot of these covers are off. And the artwork was done by Tim Jacobus in the original series. I don't remember who took over for him, like in the Give Yourself Goosebumps, like the later ones. Like, they have different artists now who really say you know, Vampire Breath. But yeah, there's all my, there's a bunch of Goosebumps books. Uh, sorry it's too dark, you can't see them. I tried to get as much light in here. I drew the curtains and everything. Yeah, love Goosebumps. All right, well. I'm Hellhound. And you're it. What the heck? I'm Spellbinder. And uh, until next time, peace.